what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel today we're gonna be doing another prison story i try to do it on my live streams but it's okay to make videos too i would i would think you know not a lot of you catch my live streams and what you need to start coming by and doing so make sure you got the notification bell on that way you know when i go live and when i upload a video now like i said Today we're going to be talking about prison story. Today I think we're going to be talking about the time I did in the halfway house. As most of you guys know, I did six years in the feds. And usually right before you come home, you go to the halfway house for a certain amount of time, depending on how long you've done your time. I think the max at the time when I was in was six months. And I pretty much went... I did five months. I did five months there. I went like a month... Or, or late or something because my case manager at the time where i was at butner fucking real asshole man so i don't know he was messing up my paperwork but anyhow i got five months in the halfway house and it was in my area so that was real good because sometimes they send you to like they only got them in certain cities right so they try to send you to one that's close to where you are going to be living at and lucky for me mine was right in my city few miles down from where I live at so I pretty much lucked out I was home feeling good first day out it wasn't really my first day out but it was my first day out of prison though and considering I'm at the halfway house in my city yeah, I was home I know I got to go home on the weekends as long as I was working and doing what I was supposed to do and they let you go home on the weekends and I was at towards the end of the year so I got the holiday breaks and all that stuff I was able to go home for a week during Thanksgiving, Christmas, I went home for a week. But anyhow, so I'm already running late. Cause like I said, my dumbass case manager was trying to hit me up for me going home. That's another story. I think I've talked about it on a live stream, but I'll make a video about it. Yeah, he hit me up, so I was already gonna be like four hours late to the halfway house because my mom's had to come all the way to North Carolina, three hours away, pick me up, then come back to the halfway house. So I knew I was going to be late because I wanted to eat. You know what I'm saying? I had no real food yet. I wanted to get some clothes because I had nothing. Get to the halfway house. I'm, I get there, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock at night. <sighs> they check me in. And when you first get there, it's like a, the building is, it's not a house house. It's, it's, it's building. The one, you know, it may be different somewhere else. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's a building. It's not a house, but it's got mad rooms in it. And when you first get there, being... You ain't been there. They stick you in the biggest room in the building. And it's got like 30 people in that room. And it's like a dorm. It's like a dorm. You ain't got uh you got bunk beds and all that stuff. But these these dudes were wilding out when I got in there. I mean, I knew some already because I was locked up with them from previous prisons I was at. So that was kind of cool that I knew a couple people already. Oh, I got a top bunk in the big ass room, right? These dudes got portable DVD players. You gotta imagine, this is 2009, right? So these dudes got portable DVD players. They got the cell phones. Once you ain't, you can have the, DVD, the portable DVD players, but you can't handle cell phones yet. These dudes wilding out, they watching, they watching the porn. They watching porn on them DVD players, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yo. And I ain't seen nothing in a while, right? So I'm just like, I'm peeping. <laughs> I'm peeping, right? <laughs> I'm just like, damn, man. And people used to go, <laughs> and people used to go in the shower with them portable DVD players, man. Set them up. They had like a little shelf in the shower jank, right? <laughs> Set them right there and gun them down. They gunning them girls down in the shower. <laughs> but anyway, man. <laughs> When you first get there, you're, you're in a big room, like I said. Then you gotta go to like some sort of orientation. They let you know what the rules are and all that stuff. <clears throat> and uh, then they give you like a, a four hour pass to where you can go get things you need. So you, you had to walk, you know what I mean? To walk to these stores, like, you know, like Sears or whatever. You know, just get some clothes on your back, man. Get some hygiene stuff. Things like that, right? Then pretty much you're just sitting around until you get a job, man. I mean, they feed you there, you know, you got uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and all that. But a lot of guys that have been there, they've already got jobs, so they're leaving throughout the day. 
staying back to like late at night depending on what they're doing so i'm trying to get something like that to where i can be gone all day i ain't trying to sit around and do nothing but i had to wait man and so uh, i think my first job that i got was at no i know it was it was chanello's i had to catch the bus up there man i was just handing out flyers man that's all they wanted us to do it was me and two other guys we go around different neighborhoods just putting flyers on the mailboxes or the doors whatever they were getting calls man talking about suspicious people in the neighborhoods man I'm like yo we just trying to work man that's crazy so he had to let well he didn't let me go he let the other two guys go and I started working there doing the pizzas and all that I'm working I'm doing the pizza thing but that didn't even last long itself because it's like somebody had to let me go because it just like he kind of had somebody that was part-time I was like okay well I didn't like it anyway man because I'm catching the bus up and down I ain't got no car yet I ain't, I ain't I don't like the bus man I don't like bus at all so anyway, I got this other job. I was able to get this other job. Just going around, knocking on people's doors, trying to get leads for the salespeople. I, I don't really remember exactly what it was, but I know I just had a Blackberry. I snuck in a Blackberry. Y'all remember the Blackberries, right? So I had a Blackberry. I would just look at the people's info and you had these sheets to fill out and put the people's names in, whatever. Cause I don't like going door to door. I'm not a salesperson. I've never been. I don't like doing that kind of stuff. So I just find any, try to find any other way that's a slime. I try to find any way I can get out of it. Cause we're going all over these different cities in my area. And it's like, it's cool to get out the halfway house, but it's like, damn man, we out in the heat. So I'm just sitting on corners of streets, whatever. Looking up Blackberry, typing the address, get the person's name. I just fill out the paper like that. So it's whatever. And I'm still getting paid. So, and at the half house, you got to give like 25% of your check or something or $25. I don't really remember. And once you do that, you're allowed to go home. You can go home for the weekend. Leave on Friday afternoon, come back Sunday night. And that's what I look forward to every week, man. Y'all don't understand. I was so happy to come home, stay with moms, chill with friends, chill with family. Sunday nights, man, I hated going back, but I knew I would just kept working, do that back and forth. That's time would have went by. I was better than being in prison, I'll tell you that. So eventually, that job obviously didn't work out. So, but before all that, I was able to get into a smaller room, which has, I think, one, two, maybe six people. And this time I'm rocking. I got an MP3 player, finally, jamming out, listening to music. And I still had to go to like this drug counseling thing once a week too. And I was, and, and these jobs knew it because I started working at this uh, uh, meat packing plant and these people knew it because you're hiring people from the halfway house. You know, some people got to go to this drug counseling thing once a week. But it's a problem when you try to go. They won't try to let people go to the drug counseling thing. They're trying to hem people up, man. I'm telling you, man. And they knew it. They held that shit over your head. Come on, we can send you back anytime. I don't fall for that. I just quit. I quit the job. You ain't gonna hold nothing over my damn head. I'll tell you that right now. Nope. So pretty much what I did, man, was like... I had a little money saved up and they didn't even care if you weren't working or not, man. Just as long as they got a little bit of money every week, because there was so many people there really, they didn't keep track of nothing, man. Come to find out whether you were working or not. As long as you gave them a certain amount of money every week, they let you go home. So what I do, <laughs> I call my people up. <laughs> they think I'm working or at least looking for a job. I called my people up. Hey, come pick me up. Come scoop me up. We're going to go hang out, man. That's what I did. After a certain amount of time, they're going to let you go home on house arrest. Say so you got, for me, I had a month left. They was like, all right, we're kicking you out, man. We, you can go on home, man. We're going to put you on No ankle bracelet. Nothing like that. They don't call to check on you. I had a guy stop by once a week just to talk, say, hey, what's going on? Looking for a job. Make sure everything's straight. Dude was real cool. I was home, man. I even try, I even try to do tattoos while I was in there. Cause once the guys found out I did tattoos, whatever, it was it was just so hard to do tattoos in there. Cause you got these guys, the I forget what we call them, man. Whatever they did, the staff, they was always walking around, man. And I had a little put together a little prison tattoo machine, and I was trying to do it, man. It was just it was too it was too hot, man. People just come in there, cause you can close doors, whatever. A lot of people weren't going to be lookouts because they weren't trying to uh, trip their time up. They weren't, they weren't trying to go back. So a lot of people were just like, nah, man, do you. 
<laughs> you get caught, you get caught. So I, I tried to do it one time, but it was just like, I was so nervous doing it, man. I just, there was just too many people, man. Nah, I'm good. The funny thing happened, the night before I was supposed to go home on house arrest, I got my little Blackberry with the earbuds. I'm on the internet, you know, Facebook and whatever, MySpace, what was it MySpace back then? MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> It was in my space for Facebook. I don't think I want Facebook yet. Staff came in. Hey, hey, Sean, what you doing over there? Nothing, man. I'm listening to music. Well, let me see your, let me see the MP3 player. I'm like, nah, man. Why? For what? Came over there and grabbed it out of my hand, man. I thought I wasn't going home. Like I said, you can't have cell phones, anything like that. And we used to sneak them in because they pat you down every time you come in. And you just keep that shit right there on your belt buckle, man. A little small Blackberry right there. Just... They ain't feeling it. <laughs> you get in that way. But I was like, damn. Now I'm not going to go home on house arrest, man. I got to do the last month here, man. They're going to write me up. Everybody's like, no, I'll just go talk to him, man. He's going to make sure probably, like, if you do it under the radar, he's going to probably just look the other way, man. He just had to do it in front of everybody. You know how some staff be, you know what I'm saying? So I went and talked to the guy. I said, look, man, I'm going home tomorrow, man. Like, I've been good this whole time, man. I ain't give y'all no problems. Like, what's the what's the problem, man? You know, what's the deal here? What's the score here? What's next? Like, can I get that back, man? I ain't gonna call them. I'm gone tomorrow morning. Like, come on, man. I know you ain't trying to do no paperwork, man. He's like, you know, you right, man. He's like, I, I ain't know you was going home, man. My bad, man. But, you know... I'm gonna give it back to you later when ain't nobody looking though. I'm like, all right, that's cool, man. He said, go out for a cigarette because you had to sign this paper anytime you want to go outside and smoke a cigarette. He's like, next time you go out, hey, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna come outside and give it to you. I'm like, all right. Bet. So I waited a couple hours, went and signed the paper, went and smoked a cigarette, came out there. He said, all right, good luck, all that stuff. He was a real cool dude, man. I thought he was an asshole, but he was, ended up being real cool. Gave me the Blackberry back. And uh, I went home the next day. It really wasn't a wild story. I remember one time they tried to they tried to switch things up, man. They tried to get you, man. Sleeping in the middle of the night, they hit that fire alarm, man. They want you to go outside. That way you ain't got no time to put nothing up, man. They're trying to catch that contraband. Uh, they did that one time, and I hated it. It was like 2 in the morning or something like that. 2, 2, 30. I don't really remember. Man. You got to remember, this is years ago. Well, the mother, we're just out standing in the parking lot, man. And they just going through everything, trying to find everything. I was like, damn, I ain't got my Blackberry. <laughs> I was like, yo, they're going to get my Blackberry, man. Uh, but they didn't. I didn't care they found a prison thing, my tattoo machine. I don't care. I care less about that. But, I mean, it wasn't really exciting. There ain't really nothing to the halfway house. You just got to, it's supposed to fuck, it's supposed to help you migrate back into society. But, nah, they just wanted their money, man. As long as you gave them money. As long as you were doing what you're supposed to do, they gonna let you do what you want to do, pretty much. I mean, there's rules and all that, but where I was at, it really wasn't that bad, man. You, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, man, they, they gonna set you free. I ain't really seen nobody get written up like that. Everybody was usually just working, doing what they had to do. I know that some halfway houses, you was like a snitch or something. They find out the people you snitched on, they find out you in the halfway house. They coming after you, man. I heard stories, man. While I was locked up. I can't comment on them. I don't really, not from personal experience. I try to keep it to what I did and what I know. But yeah, I was shooting up halfway houses, waiting for you to come out. Try to get at you, try to jump you. Crazy, man. Lucky it won't like that around here. People are just chilling, want no fights. Nothing. People just trying to go home. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, I'm going to start doing these maybe once a week. Maybe we'll start talking about stuff on live stream. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed or if you're new to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, click that notification bell. That way you get notifications when I upload a video or when I do go live. Uh, smash that like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this kind of videos. A lot of you guys seem to enjoy them, so I'll keep doing them. We got a new season of Love After Lockup. This came out last week. I will be uploading one this week, so be on the lookout for that. I don't know if these are all new people or 
gonna be like updates on the old guy. I don't know. We're gonna find out together though. I just gotta find the episode. I'm gonna put it up this week. So like I said, be on the lookout for that. Uh, shout out, huge shout out to my members. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Supporting your boy it means a lot. I'm very grateful. Salute each and every one of you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next video.